Public Access Television is not responsible for program content. This program is produced by Anchored in Faith Gospel Church of Oxford, Iowa. Reverend Linda Hahn, Senior Pastor. The latest release of our full-length cable TV telecasts are now prominently posted each week, beginning Sunday evenings on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Anchored in Faith. Search for Anchored in Faith, all one word, in the search box for smart TVs and Roku TV viewing. From Anchored in Faith Gospel Church in Oxford, Iowa, this is Anchored in Faith. Well, people, we're here to thank the Father, thank Jesus, the Holy Spirit. Yes. We're here another year. I can't believe. It just seems like three or four months ago we were doing our 25th year anniversary. I said, I just can't believe. This is, I says, we have to go to 30 now. <laughs> Right? We have to go the 30. The church has to go the 30, you know. So I just thank the ones that did show up today. I appreciate it. Oh, boy, here comes somebody else. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, they got, oh, yeah, they got to have to sing, too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on in. <laughs> you didn't bring your other people with you? Where's the rest of your group? A lot going on. A lot going on. I know, I know. God bless you. Hey, you, you, got, you guys are going to do a song for yeah, us? Man, if you like us too. Oh, I'd love to have you guys do a song for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have a pastor there from uh, Des Moines, right? Amen. Amen. They travel all the way here. We had some people could drive a fur piece to get here. <laughs> so you introduce yourself, okay? God bless everyone. We're so glad to be here. We thank everyone for having us. We love the Lord. Um, we've been we've been in this race for a long time. Ever since 1975, the Lord got a hold to us. Um, we were living in, in common law and shacking up and back and, and we were from the old school. Our pastor didn't play that. So he said, Well, you know, y'all need to get married. And so we thank God we had uh, one child already, and we got married in 1975. We got saved in 1975 yeah. under one of them old-time tent meetings. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. One of them tent meetings. Hallelujah. You don't see them too much anymore. But I was 17 years old and he was 18. To tell you how God worked, when we came in the tent meeting, the Lord led us both down close to the front. We sat on the second row and when the word of God came coming, we had never heard nothing like it. I hadn't. And the Lord seemed like just raised me up off that seat and I found myself at the altar with both hands raised and he was standing right next to me. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We just celebrated October 4th. My husband and I just celebrated our 44th wedding anniversary. We, and we, we, we our, our oldest daughter, Latasha, she went on to be with the Lord in March of this year. And that was one of the hardest things we had to go through. But through it all, you know, we just learned to trust in Jesus. Because he's the one that upholds us with his, by his free spirit. Hallelujah. And I want to thank God for his many blessings. Honey, did you want to say anything? Amen. Amen. We just come to praise and magnify the Lord. Amen. I don't know what you come to do, but I come to give him praise. I come to give him glory. I come to lift his name up. Amen. We, we came from Des Moines just to, just to be with you. Uh, we were here on last year. We had more people with us last year, but we had a lot of things take place. You know, we lost some people who went on to be with the Lord, and, and we had a lot of things take place. Some that were going with us today, uh, 
somebody got hurt in the family and they had to go to the hospital so they wasn't able to make it but we said we're coming on in Jesus name amen so we're here just to magnify the Lord with you to lift the, up the name of Jesus and to celebrate uh, amen we here to celebrate Jesus so amen God bless you and be encouraged be encouraged amen there is a name I love to hear hallelujah and it sounds like music to to my ears it is the sweetest name I have ever known it is Jesus oh Jesus, one more time, Jesus is the sweetest name I know about the Lord, oh, about the Lord, oh, about the Lord, about the Lord. because if it wasn't for him building this church with blood, sweat, and tears, and that's what he built this church on. Blood, sweat, and tears is in this church. And uh, so we're going to have some uh, outtakes of some of his messages for, I think, about 15 minutes. So, so anyway, I know some of you don't know Pastor John, and, uh, uh, but uh, I, I, I want to give him honor. Yes. You know, I think he, we need to give him honor. Yes. So bear with us if you, I know you don't know him. So, John, do you want to get this started? 
It lost, I had a heck of a time getting to Christ. Only took me 20 years to get my life because I had to try and figure it out. I had to figure it out. I had to study it out. I was going to work it out. I was going to get there one way or another, but I was going to work it out. Amen? Because I knew all about religion. I knew the Bible better than most preachers, and I still wasn't right with God. I kept days and weeks and hours and feasts and food laws and there is a feast, which we're coming up on in the Hebrew feast, called the Feast of Unleavened Bread. For eight days. That concludes the Passover and the seven days following it. You are to have no leaven in your house. Well, I thought I did pretty good this time. I mean, I cleaned the house and I did all that stuff. It is a good way of getting the house clean. Did the, and, and on the eighth day of the, on the last day of it, I was... It was supposed to be a high holy day, not supposed to work, so I went fishing because I figured fishing wouldn't work. And Goose Eater handed me a pretzel just as the sun set, and I ate that pretzel. I hadn't touched any leaven. The sun hadn't set. Another five minutes, I'd have made it. Then I read the pretzel bag. Sent to hell for a pretzel. <laughs> but one Friday evening, about sunset, I was standing down up on the bank. Her daddy was down in the hole. We were digging a basement hole. He had run in the back hole. I had been fighting a battle to get this work done, working this construction work out in the hot sun, and just been beating my body. I'd been studying the Word of God and been trying to figure God out. I had been closer to knowing what was going on with God than I'd ever been in my life. God had to speak to me in a dramatic way. I'm, I'm a bonehead now. I mean, I, stubbornness is one of my attributes. He spoke to me this way. The, the backhoe tractor literally almost exploded before our eyes. The entire rear end of the thing came apart and both wheels fell off on the ground. And I said, okay, God, I give up. I can't do it. Whatever you want me to do, I'm do it. I lay down my agenda. I'll do what you ask me to do. My life changed dramatically. My theology's changed. Because the religion I was in, I was, I was earning my way to heaven. He gave me a free gift and he poured onto me his Holy Ghost Spirit. I left that place, and I said to, to Donnie, I says, I need to be baptized. I want to be baptized. We drove around all that Sabbath day, all that Saturday day, looking for a place. The river was so high you couldn't get to it, and the, the mud holes were so low you couldn't get in them. I finally found a creek, and I was baptized in water, sand, and mud. Because to get me clear under, they almost had to stand on me. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I didn't know anything about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It wasn't part of our religion. I got two apricot trees out here. Or did have. There's still one. One of that, that ugly tree. That misformed tree out there is the tree. On the right-hand side of the road was another perfectly shaped tree, and on this other side is this misfigured, windstruck apricot tree. Neither of them had ever bore fruit. 
The one on the right-hand side was perfectly shaped. Not a flaw to be found in it. Perfect. Had, 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 had the prettiest green leaves all over it you ever seen. The one on the left, well, you see it. It's <laughs> misshaped, grows every crazy direction you ever wanted to see. And I said to Jim, I says, I'm going to do, we're going out here. I'm tired of this thing. Jesus was demonstrating to me that he was tired of this thing. You see, I had had some pretty good looking leaves on me. I had good looking leaves. I'd read through the Bible in five translations by that time already. I could Bible argue you down and make my point come across. I was never wrong, right, Mom? Good looking leaves. Didn't have no fruit. There wasn't an apricot hanging on me. Just legalism. Jim spoke, come here, boys. I got two boys, got two apricot trees. On this side, come here, Rick. You're going to be Jim. Look at this perfect apricot tree. I mean, look at that perfect smile. Leaves all over that thing. This here, crooked. <laughs> yeah, a little crooked, not the best looking apricot tree you've ever seen. Amen. Jim went over and spoke to this tree. And this is what we said. We said to these trees, you either bear fruit or you're cursed and die at the root. You die. And this, this is what happened to me. I said, either bear fruit or die. You know, I'm a shot. Now raise your hands up. That thing raised up. That thing had, that thing had 25 gallons of apricots on it that year. They've been bearing apricots every couple of years since. This tree bears fruit. It gave up to the word of God. I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. I didn't even know what it was because I followed the instruction. I mean, there's instruction there. Be baptized in the name of the Lord. You receive. I did. I didn't. It, it's weird. Just got it. I turned out to be this tree. I might have been a little gnarled, and bad looking. You can sit down. But I gave up and I bore fruit because I allowed his spirit to come through me. I got a one-track mind. The only thing I ever am concerned about is bringing souls into the kingdom of God and establishing them in a Christian walk that they might be true Christians. Not that they just walked up an aisle and said some kind of little prayer and did some kind of little flim-flam with their lip, but their life actually became changed. The prophet has no honor in his own city. They know you too well. Well, they think we've got them brainwashed. Well, because we are brainwashing and the blood of Jesus is washing the filth out and bringing in the truth of Christ. Amen. Amen. And I'm telling you what, that's what it's all about. You know, if I was half as bad as they say I would, I would have been the worst son of a guy that ever hit the streets of Oxford. And they said, well, he was the drunkenest. And if I was, boy, it really shows what God did, did not it? Amen. 1984, I preached my first sermon at a rendezvous. 1985, I preached against the Red Path, which set me apart. Huh? Indian religion. What's all those people that go out in teepees? That's what they do, which cut my tent sails in half. <laughs> I mean, I've always been bold for Jesus. My daughter can testify that. I didn't care if they didn't buy a tent from me. I'll figure God supplied. Thank God the assembly of God started buying them when I had to make tents for a living. God turned off one and went to another. And then I'd sell occasion pretty soon. I was selling these big tents to evangelists once in a while. Now what God really delivered me from was idol worship. Black and tan coon dogs were my God. And then teepees and campfires and stuff for my God. And then I tended to mix them together. I wasn't happy with one. I'd have them all mixed together, you know. 
Uh, and then Jesus came on the scene. Amen. And I no longer was I bound. I was freed. And I started to do the work of Jesus Christ. And I preached all over the United States under tents and taverns. The Rendezvous Tavern, they would give me the tavern on Sunday morning and I would preach there. And I saw souls saved all over the United States of America. And people's lives changed that will never be the same again because when I got free, I wasn't afraid to say what Jesus had done for me. And then I came back to my home city and I planted a church because God pressed me for five years to plant a church and I planted in my own backyard because of financial considerations. You know, plant a church... Had to fight the city council, get the American Center for Law and Justice with the 700 Club to come get me a building permit. You think this place ain't a miracle? Built onto the church while I was going through a mess of a divorce, which most ministers are just done for once that happens. Jesus has set me free. Just like he did that. And he did set most of the people, not all, but most of the people sitting in this house this morning got saved or brought back to the Lord in this fellowship. This may not be the fanciest church in the whole world, but it's a church that was built on faith. Built the first part, didn't have no congregation at all. Then a challenged young man started coming to church. Just one. He broke my $200 chemical toilet. Because we didn't have plumbing. And he didn't know how to work the levers. He was like Neanderthal man. He could just tear anything. He didn't tear, intend on tearing things up. He just touched it and it was broke. But he got, yeah. He got saved. And he'd come in in the morning and he'd say, I come to see Jesus. Amen. And I'd stand out there and I'd preach to him. I'd preach to him just as though if there was a thousand people sitting in that auditorium. And the blessing of God and the anointing of God would come and it would touch. And it would encourage. Before that, things were a little tough. We'd seen a great revival in the church. We were meeting in, whoo, time for a little history. We were meeting in the canvas shop. Took the big yellow tent, put the old yellow tent up right where that building is there. Had the yellow tent out there. Going to have a revival. Going to have a revival on Memorial Day. What a dumb idea. Everybody left the church the day before. They all left. All got up and left. They had to come to face with some kind of commitment. They were supposed to put their name on the line. When it come time to put their name on the line, everybody left. I went out here and I started to preach. There was nobody under that tent. All of a sudden, here comes Sister Deborah and her husband. Before it was over, we had five people. And then some of them came back. Some of them got delivered from going to jail. Some got when they walked in the door, they, when they walked in the through the curtain of that tent, they would literally fall on the ground and start to weep before God. Because all of a sudden they knew where the anointing of God was, and all of a sudden their lives was changed. And out of the six of them supposed to go to prison, only on them went. And they're still changed today. They may not be sitting in the house, but the change is still in their life. They know where it came from. Christians all the time are, we talk about going to heaven, but then we get down to the point of doing it, we get a little skittish. <laughs> Amen? Well, if it's as glorious as God said that, I think I'm ready to go. And if you shouldn't need me, I'm ready to go. And if he needs me here, I'll keep doing what I'm doing. Amen? I look forward to the day that I'll have a crown to cast. That I'll be resurrected and be with Jesus Christ. And that the whatever good that for the kingdom of God that John Hahn has done, whatever there is, I will have the honor of saying, I didn't do it. You did, Jesus. I was just a rotten old lump of clay. Amen? Amen. Throwing it down before his feet saying, Whatever I did, it was because you gave me the ability. It wasn't anything that was, that was w w of my own honor and my own principle that there might be a few souls that actually made it into heaven for the effort that I had put forth. Think about that.
I don't care what it takes. I want to be fully used up. Nothing hanging back. And nothing hanging on. Just going forward with everything on the line. How many of you are crunch players in here? Anybody here? I say anybody is ready to put their life on the line. I ain't going to preach. Anybody here ready to go to mouth? Anybody ready to go to far distance? Because of the fact is, what Jesus done for you on the cross, it should make you want to go forward. Jesus didn't bag off the cross. He went for it. He gave it back up. All of it. Whipped beyond recognition. Blood came streaming down. All the way down to the cross. And that blood Jesus shed for remission of sin to forgive you for every sin. What the, cross, what the law couldn't do, the law just covered your sin. With the uh, blood sacrifice of animals only. Just cover like this right here. If I had something, you know, I could cover up today, praise God. If I had a book to cover up, all it did was this right here. It didn't take it away, but Jesus' blood. No more to remember. No more to remember. He said, I will remember your sins no more because you accepted Jesus as your Savior, as your God and Savior. Do I have an amen in the house? I said, you chose him. He chose you. You didn't chose him. This is about celebrating. This is, is a victory. The anniversary. You know, I'm so sorry. I got some towel back here. Give me one second. Give me that towel, hon. This is a victory celebration. That's right. Pastor John literally had the uh, ulcers on his feet from diabetics. And blood is in the bricks, actually. His, his ulcers were bleeding on his feet when he was doing the construction on this building. I don't hear nobody here today. I said his right. sweating, dripping off in the concrete. You know, concrete got water, you know, when you mix it. But still, sweat can drop off. That's what happened. This building is still standing by the grace of God. And that little TV camera got it going all over. Just all over Eastern Iowa, all over in the Midwest, a lot of places. You wouldn't think a small camera like that, but it works. Pastor John was a man that stood on the word of God. Just like other men of God, they didn't back off. They didn't care if you got mad at them or what. Sometimes you got to get mad to get the deliverance. Sometimes the word of God will make you mad. You look like you foaming out of your mouth like a dog that's mad. But he going to preach it out. He said the word of God said be preaching in season, instant and out of season. I heard you say that, Pastor Lamb. Kind of pro provoke me to a to good things. See, because you can provo pro provoke me to good works. It ain't got to be for anger. I don't know. I don't hear you. I think that somewhere over in the New Testament, provoke me to love and good works. I want to be provoked for love and to do good works. I don't want to do nothing to glorify myself. I tell you what, I lose out. How many of you say I lost many times trying to glorify my flesh? Because this flesh ain't nothing but like filter rags in the eyesight of the Lord. I don't hear you, amen. I said this flesh ain't saved no way. Hey, hey, hey. It ain't saved no how. It ain't saved no way. But it's the spirit of you, of Jesus inside you that saved. That I have a witness that that pure Jesus inside of you is the one thing that make you saved. And that's when I give him praise. That's why I give him glory. That's why I give him honor. Because he's been mighty good to me. He's been better to me than I've been to myself. Do I have somebody to just raise a hand and say, thank you, Jesus, for all you've done for me way back on Calvary. And I'm so glad that he saved my soul. And I'm so glad he made me whole. I'm so glad delivered me. I'm so glad he set me free. That's sweet. I can look at the word of God and beat the devil black and blue. Pastor Jeff, I'm getting like you now. Sorry, Pastor. I love Jesus. 
I know I'm a clown for Jesus Christ. That's okay. I'm stirring up right now. You're screwed on the right boat. <laughs> we want to bring the pastor, the evangelist up, the real man for the hour. And the first lady. Come on up, evangelist Lamb. He got so many years on me, I want to listen to you. This oh, is the thank God. God. Praise the Lord, everybody. Give the Lord a great big God bless you today. Give an honor to all of you and the Brother Han and Sister Han. It's certainly a great pleasure to be here. I love to see people worshiping God and having a good time. A lot of people say, well, that's foolishness. Well, I may be a fool, but I'm screwed on the right boat. I know which way God is and who he stands for. We are uh, kind of hoarse. We do beg your pardon for that because we have been in 14 solid weeks on the road preaching and praying in other tents and auditoriums and churches. And we're fixing to leave again. We're glad to be here. We pastor churches, Silver Cell and Norris, where the Rays been to our church, and we enjoyed having them. I've enjoyed being here today. And I'm going to do what God says do. Is that all right? A lot. First of all, I'm going to take off my coat. A lot of the preachers don't like that, you know, but I'm not a, I'm not so well educated. <laughs> Amen. I'm just like a lot of old folks in this business. I've been in this business 67 years. 80, soon be 86 years old. I can bounce to Brother Hahn as a repair tent because I had a big old 60 by 120 he had to bring up here. We stretched it out in the front yard, and he sewed that thing back together. Some of you might remember we had all that big tent stretched out all over his yard. But I'll tell you what, today he's in glory. He's worked hard and sweated to keep this church going. And what I'm going to say is going to be a short and fast and right to the point. I didn't come to make friends. I didn't come to make you mad. But if you get mad, we don't pass out no bottles. We don't have no foolers. We don't have no diapers. Somebody ought to say amen. But I want to tell you one thing. If some of y'all are sitting here today, you need to get up off of your Watusi or your rear end. Amen. And start doing more for God in this church than sit back and talk about it. Now you need to get behind this thing 100%. The day of revivals are just beginning, and if we're not careful, we're going to miss it, folks. I'm telling you, because we are up for the last day revival. Can you say amen? The Bible said the latter be more than the greater. Uh, it's going to be former. It's going to be so great. I'm going to be in that number, a number that no man can number. It don't go to color. It don't go to what you look like. It goes to what you got on the inside of your body. Can somebody Somebody say amen. I want you to understand one thing today. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he. He is a miracle working God. He's a saving God. He's a keeping God. He's an angel. Amen. Sent from God. Now I want you to know one thing this afternoon. God loves you and I just as we are. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost is real right in here. If you don't believe it, get up here. I wonder why Sister Han kept walking back and forth across there. She's got a right to walk back and forth across there. I want to tell you one thing today. We've had a great time shouting. We've had a great time praying. We've had a great time in music. And I want to tell you one thing. There's no reason why we can't keep this thing going from year to year and month to month. Come on, somebody. I came today to tell you something. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I know because what God can do. I have been in this thing a long time. I have traveled a long time. I wore out 10 or 12 Bibles. Amen. My wife wrote down the other day and bought me a new tops and chains. Amen. But I want you to turn with me just for a moment. Not going to hold you, but just a minute. But I want to get something to you. 
I know everybody's wanting to eat, but we got something else we want to do because God has laid it on my heart. See, I walk in the gills. I don't know whether other people know that. Now, somebody's scared when somebody goes walk in the gills. They get scared, you call them out of crowds. Amen. You know the reason why they do? Because they ain't living right. Because if you're living right, you ain't got nothing to worry about. That's going to be the same way when you stand before God. Turn with me just for a moment. Second Timothy. If you will, please. Very first chapter. Going to the very sixth verse. Just start with that. And I'm just going to read a verse of scripture here. Therefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up. Do you know what I'm reading? Do you know that God has given every one of us a gift? Do you understand? I learned this years ago when Brother Allen and Brother Cole, they're two of my mentors. And I want to tell you one thing. God said, stir up your gift. He wants you to stir up what he has given you. The Bible said, God has dealt to every man in major faith. And we have faith, for without faith, it is impossible to please God. But with faith, faith, all things are possible to them that believe us. How many believers we got here today? I really believe God, don't you? I believe God can do anything but fail. Somebody ought to say, praise the Lord on that one. Amen. Serve that gift, which, the gift of God which is in thee, by putting on my hands, for God has not given us the spirit of fear. But of what? Sound mind. Aren't you glad you know who Jesus is? Aren't you glad you know that he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end? Aren't you glad of that to know today? That our God is a miracle working God. He didn't come just overnight. He was here in the beginning. Amen. Come on. Everything was made was made by him. Yeah. I was standing watching Brother Hunt. Pardon me for pulling my pants. I forgot my galluses. <laughs> I've lost so much weight. Amen. But I want to tell you something. When we stir up the gift in us, God's going to stir other folks as well as he's stirring us. Come on now. If we spend as much time praying as we do growling and fussing, amen, and backbiting and feeling so bad all the time and feeling sorry for ourselves, I just came out of revival, old-time tent revival. And I want to tell you something. I've seen people come into church, pastors. Brother Lamb, can you help me? I said, no, I don't think so. <laughs> Brother Lamb, I just don't know what to do. I go to church on Sunday, and we got a handful there. Lord, I just don't know what to do. Can you help me? I don't think so. First of all, you're not wanting help. You're wanting pity. You're already on the pity pot. Why should I put you under it? If we would realize that God told Paul and Paul told Timothy to stir up your gift in you, stir it up. He gave us the Holy Ghost not to sit down on our red tooth to be recoverable. He gave us the Holy Ghost to let the world know great is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Can somebody say amen? I looked at his pastor. I said, how long have you been preaching, brother? About four years. I said, you're not even wet behind the ears good. He said, well, I don't know now they're wanting to vote me out. I said, if I was dead as you, I'd be wanting to vote me out. We got preachers that have been preaching for years that are deader than doornails. And if you're going to an old church that's dead, you better get out of it. 
because you'll be dead right behind them. Come on, the Bible said, let the dead bear the dead. Amen. Come on, somebody. We are live. We'll build up, we'll build ye up lively stone. Do you know what we're talking about? God's people are lively people. Went through now. I'll pray for you in a minute. Just sit down. My wife looked at me kind of funny. The partner with me that looked at me kind of funny. He said he had a reason for him to sit down. I want him to hear some things. See, faith comes by and by hearing of, of the word. For that word was in the beginning, and this word is going to be in the inning. Do you hear me? He was word made flesh. Are you understanding me tonight? And he dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory in Christ Jesus. Do you understand that? This is something the world needs to know tonight. There wasn't anything made that he didn't make. Oh, uh, I had a person ask me down in Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee, here a while back. I said, Brother Lamb, you ever seen Jesus? I said, yes, sir. Come on. He said, you're crazy. He said, you're nuts. I said, I may be nuts, but I'm screwing the right boat. <laughs> See, a lot of people don't realize where God is. Now, a good time for some of y'all hollering, man. <laughs> he said, you mean to tell me that you have seen God? I said, yes, sir. Well, how have you seen him? I said, do you ever shave? <laughs> well, yeah. I said, what do you do? He said, I look in the mirror. I said, what do you see when you look in the mirror? He said, well, I see me. I said, are you born again? Yes, that I've seen you see God, for we are the express image of God. Woo! Somebody ought to shout on that. We look like him. We walk like him because we belong. God makes us like he is. We belong to him. Glory be to God. When we look like him, we ought to walk like him. We ought to talk like him. We ought to act like him. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. God is the same. Hebrews 13, 8, yesterday, today, and forever. Then we're going to find that. Isaiah, he said, I am the Lord thy God, and beside me there is no other God. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. It ain't Prince Albert either. Why are we walking around sick all the time? For the wages of sin is death. And the soul that sinneth shall surely die a spiritual death. That's why we got so many dry churches. They got great big crowds on Sunday morning. They go in all of them will shake and shout on Sunday morning, oh, how I love Jesus. And the next thing they're down to the football game, hollering football or wrestling match, kill that man or something. You know what I mean? Where your heart is, thy lies your treasure also. If your heart is to be in the house of God, then you'll be in the house of God. Oh, you better hear me tonight. We are Christian people. We need to walk like God and talk like God. It's through him we have our going, our being. It's through him do you hear me tonight. Not going to hold you long. You ask me why that I'm happy. Because 1900, the late 52, God got a hold to me on 36th Avenue in Miami, Florida. Reached down and got an old Kentucky boy that was born on Ninth and Plum, nine miles back and plum behind everything. So poor, 
we didn't have indoor toilets. So poor, we had to feed the stove, wood stove. So poor, well, we didn't afford to throw away no beans. Didn't wait, throw, didn't, couldn't afford to throw away cornbread or biscuits. So poor, we had to dip biscuits in buttermilk or sweet milk to get them softened up to eat them. But one day, one day, I came in contact with a man that all the time been looking for me. Come on, somebody. Born a death baby. I was born dead. No life in me. A blue birth. A breech birth. No life. An old gray-headed mother picked me up. Put me in her arms. Hair plumbed down to the floor. Like the women used to wear. Wearing them old shoes that she walked in the garden with. And I've heard her out in the garden many a time. Saying, I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses. Oh, that night, the doctor said, there's nothing we can do for him, Miss Lamb. He's dead. And my mother was almost dead. My grandmother said, God in heaven. She said to God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, she know who to pray to. She said, you promised me a grandson that would carry this gospel till you come. Amen. We're not far from the coming. Come on, right. Come on now. Amen. The coming of the Lord is the next greatest thing that's going to happen in Bible prophecy. Amen. Come on, Bible readers. Amen. It's fixing to happen. Amen. She prayed, and God called me into the ministry, and I'm not ashamed of it. Amen. 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 I want you to understand, I'd rather have Jesus than anything I know of. I'd rather have him than all the worlds like this. Oh, yes, I've had big tents. I've had fine homes. I've had all of that. I know what it's all about. But I still got what I started with, and that's Jesus. The girl, the devil can't take it. The world can't, don't like it. And God makes it so. Do you believe it? Say amen. That's why I am very happy. Because he reached down a hand to a miserable like me and he picked me up, took me from nothing and made something out of it. I know what people were talking about. Brother Han a while ago was talking. When going through the, uh, my wife is sitting here and I was saying, have we been married so long it don't make no difference. All of our kids are grown and grandkids are half grown. But I want to tell you something. Right at the tip top of my ministry, I was on Del Rio, Texas radio station, border to border. Years ago, Paul Kellinger along the way. I came on, came on that radio before J. Harold Smith, just before Dr. Smith came on. Now listen to me. Right at the tip top of our ministry, I went through a bad, dirty divorce. Lost everything. But all I did lose, I did not lose my soul. God said, you can strip him. You can take everything away from him you want to take away from him. But you cannot have his soul. And I want you to know one thing. I thought the end of the world had come. Oh, but it didn't happen. God said, let not your heart be troubled. I still love you, son. I've raised you to where you're at right now. And I had great preachers to hold my hand up. Brother Shambach, Allen, A.A. A. Allen, a few of them old boys that know what it's all about. And I want to tell you right now, I had some of the best Baptist preachers to hold my hands up and let me stand in the gate and stand in the gap. I said, if you hold me up, I'll take another punishment. I'll take another knock. I'll take another beat. That was years ago, and I've never looked back. No thought to look back to. There's nothing to go back to. God is the answer of all things. Can somebody? Oh, hallelujah. God is so good. Glory to God. My Lord. My Lord, my God. My Lord, my God. My Lord, my God. God is so good. 
Brother, will you stand up and come up here a minute? Well, the chimes of time bring out the news that another, another day is through. Someone, they up and fell. But was that someone you? Now you're getting a feeling through your stomach right here. It's been knotting up on you. Amen. Oh, my God. Now, Lord, we ask you to move the pain out of it. In the name of Jesus, if I be your servant, I ask you to loose this pain right now. In Jesus' name. Now move it. Now straighten up. Now hold it at. How about your back? How about you right down by right way down there? Where, is that hurting back there? Huh? Is it blessed? It's gone. Right it's gone. Go praise God for it. Give God praise tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody ought to say amen. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? See, you don't have to get up and have everybody Uber God can all over to pray. Uber God get don't get Uber God we don't get nothing done. Who cut up my mommy? Who ha ho tie by his tail? What gets the job done is pure faith. Oh. You walk kind of crooked every once in a while, don't you? The county kind of moving, is that right? I know you do. You got one foot a little bit shorter than the other. And your hips. And your back. I, I know where I'm at. I know, I know where God sent me to. Amen. Turn that back around here to me. Now, do you want to be healed or are you just playing a game? You want to be healed right now? Right in there is sore. Is that right? Right back down in there. Right there. Is that where the short spot is? My God. God, I ask you. There's a vertebrae out of place. I ask you right now, God, is it now the heat, the heat, the, the pain is leaving. There's heat on it, ain't it? Is your back heating up? Lord, push that vertebrae right back where it belongs. In Jesus' name. Now. Now, move your back like this. Could you do that real good before? Oh, did that hurt? No. You know why? That verb is back in place. Go give God praise for it, brother. Somebody say amen. God is so good. God is so good. Hallelujah. I don't know what it is you want from God, but you got the answer on coming on its way. God's bringing the answer to you. And you'll know it when it hits because you'll receive it. You will receive the anointing when it happens. Can somebody say amen? Am I on the right path? Am I, am I believe I'm on the right push today? Amen. You know what God's doing. I don't know nobody. You all know everybody. Next time I come back, I promise you I will preach your message. But I want to do what God wants me to do today. I want to show y'all that God is real. You look at a man that's soon be 86 years old. I've been around the bush a couple of times. And I thank God. We pastor a church also. It's a small church in Silver Cell, Illinois. But it's a miracle working church. Because we believe if God can't do it, it just cannot be done. And somebody say amen. I want you to know something today. I have enjoyed being here, Brother Ray, and all these preachers, songs and testimonies. It's worth the drive. I preached this morning, had to come all the way up here, and I appreciate it. Didn't change shirt. I may smell a little rink, but that's all right. It's all for the goodness of God. And if God ever comes, I want you to find me somewhere down the altar with this on my mind. You ask me why I'm thankful. 
why I pray I sing and shout. Where you ask me why I'm thankful when the world's so full of doubt. You ask me what it is that makes me feel the way I do. Well, I found it at a Mooners bench on 36th Avenue. God bless you, Sister Han. Come on. Uh, this has been your day. This has been your day. You've got a right to shout, honey, all you want to. You've got to shout. I got, that, I got a lot to shout about people. I got a lot. Everybody come out and say, why are you always shouting everything? I say, you, what, he's brought me through. Hallelujah. And that's what brought me through. Shouting and praising him brought me through. This is your opportunity. If you have not accepted Christ into your life, you, in this world, you serve either the devil or you serve God. There is no in-between. If you're not serving God, you are serving the devil. Receive Christ into your life. Repent of your sins. Turn away from your sins. Pray with me right now. Heavenly Father, I need you in my life. I ask you to come into my life and be the Lord of my life. I repent of my sins, and I want you in my life forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. In addition to our postal address, Anchored in Faith Gospel Church has several electronic means to connect with you. Find our TV episodes at youtube.com slash anchored in faith. Visit our website, at anchoredinfaith.org. Our phone number, which is area code 319-828-4815. Our email is tv at anchoredinfaith.org. And find us on Facebook by typing at AIFGC into the Facebook search box. We are actually a small church. If you call our 828-4815 phone number, Leave a short message and make sure to include your phone number so we can call you back since we do not have caller ID. Full sermons are available anytime at www.anchoredinfaith.org. Contact us by calling 319-828-4815 or write us at Anchored in Faith, PO Box 204, Oxford, Iowa, 52322 or email us at tv at anchoredinfaith.org This has been a copyrighted presentation of Anchored in Faith Gospel Church, Oxford, Iowa. The latest release of our full-length cable TV telecasts are now prominently posted each week beginning Sunday evenings on YouTube. youtube.com slash anchoredinfaith Search for Anchored in Faith, all one word, in the search box for smart TVs and Roku TV viewing.